What is going on you guys? My name is Josh, also known as Harry Tornado, and my full-time job is selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos about it. I know I said in my very last video that I wouldn't be making a new video this week, but I have a really cool Goodwill Benz haul that I picked up earlier this week that I really want to share with you guys. Also, I'm implementing a new system of accountability and productivity into my life. I want to share that with you guys just in case it may help you. And also, I might be heading to Best Buy today to pick up a new tool slash toy to add to my YouTube arsenal. Stick around. If you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel for the Triple Thrift Podcast, that's the podcast that I do with my friends Drew and Joey, you'll know that they came up from Florida to visit me this past week on Monday and Tuesday, actually Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And Monday night, we actually did a live podcast episode in my office together. And Tuesday, we hung out a little bit and actually went to the Goodwill Bins. I didn't take my camera. I don't know why. It would have been a great video, but I actually bought everything in this bag at the Goodwill Bins that day and spent just over 13 bucks, like $13.40 or so. And it was probably one of the best Bins hauls I've had in a while. So I definitely didn't want to let this go to waste. Even if it's in a later video, I definitely still want to share it with you guys. First thing we got is this old Rawlings baseball glove. Rawlings is a really solid brand. This is a little dark and discolored, but this thing is broken in like a champ. Baby, I'm telling you, this thing is ready to go. And it's actually a softball model. You can see it right there. It says softball. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, this was just one thing we got. We probably got, I don't know, 10 or 12 different items. And this one glove should sell, even in the current condition, a little discolored for about 25 bucks or so free shipping. So that should be able to pay for the whole bag of items just with this one glove. It might sell for more. I haven't looked up the exact model. This is RSG3. Uh, but again, in the current condition, probably about 25 bucks. Then I got this pair of black men's dress boots. I don't know if these are Johnson Murphy. The tag on the inside says J Murphy. And there's a little uh, JM thingy on the back right there. So I don't know if it's a different brand called J. Murphy or if it's in like a subsidiary or whatever you call it of Johnson & Murphy. But these are men's size 10, my size. Probably going to keep these for personal use. I don't have any black boots. But if I were to sell them, I imagine you could probably get 30 bucks or so, 30, 30, 35 bucks plus shipping. I got this really cool belt. This is a just a men's like brown leather belt, but it has these South Carolina Gamecock like metal medallions on there. These are really cool. I, I live in Lexington slash Columbia, South Carolina, right like 15 minutes away from the Williams Bryce Gamecock Stadium. Uh, so I can probably throw this up locally for on Facebook Marketplace and get probably 15, 20 bucks for it pretty easily. Next up is another pair of shoes, this little pair of Nike Jordans. I think these are based off the style number, Nike Air Jordan Jumpman Team 2 2016. These are obviously a youth or kid size, uh, six size 1.5 youth, and the model is 845202-017. If you guys ever find a pair of Jordans or Nikes, they always have this little style tag in there. See if I can get it on camera. That, that number, six digits with the dash and the three more digits, you just type like Nike and then that into Google, and you'll always be able to find the exact model of the shoe. These are in pretty solid condition, and I think I'll probably be able to get about 30 to 35 bucks free shipping for these. While I was at the bins, I actually found this big pallet filled with hats and belts and ended up picking up five hats in total. We're going to go through all five of them, starting with, like, I guess the least valuable, maybe. I picked up two of these Festool hats. Festool is a brand of woodworking tools. They're a very high-end brand. You can't, you can't even find them at Lowe's or Home Depot, usually. You usually have to go to, like, some sort of... Uh, like store that sells actual like high quality wood like mahogany or cherry to find this brand of tools so being that the tools are so expensive and exclusive I imagine I could probably get about 20 18 to 20 dollars plus shipping for each of these hats they are both brand new with tags they still got the 920 new era tags on there uh, I, th I think I think just this one has a slightly larger logo than this one, but either way, uh, again, about 18 to 20 bucks plus shipping on both of these. This next hat's pretty interesting. This is a Hornady hat. Hornady is a, I think it's a company that makes bullets. I'm pretty sure they make bullets. I don't know if they make weapons or other accessories, but I know they make bullets. This is a nice little trucker hat. It's got the Hornady logos on the back as well. The only flaw is a slight little stain right there, but that should be able to come out with a Tide pin or some OxyClean or something like that. Uh, it's a pretty cool hat, uh, minimal signs of wear other than that one stain. Oh, there's some bullets right there that confirms that they probably do make bullets. 
Uh, in current condition, I could probably get like 15 bucks plus shipping for this. These last two hats are definitely vintage. I do not claim to know anything about vintage hats or clothing, but I know these are going to sell very quickly. First one is a nice little NASCAR hat. It's, I know it's going to sell quickly because it's pretty plain. It's just the regular NASCAR logo. What does that say? It says racing at its best. There's no other logos on it. Generally, if you have like NASCAR logo hats or, or clothing with other logos, like other companies or something that can kind of decrease the value of the item. But because this is just a simple NASCAR hat, I think it's going to sell pretty quickly. I, I imagine we could probably get about 20 to 25 bucks for this plus shipping. It's in really good condition. The bin, the, the bill has a slight bend in it, but it's not like broken. Uh, and the the clips on the back are in good condition as well. So pretty good, pretty good find there. And then it is a Strom brand, Strom made in the USA. And then finally, this is probably the coolest hat I've ever found. I did find a John Deere vintage trucker hat at the bins one time. I think I sold that for like 50 bucks, 55 bucks or so free shipping. This one's going to be close close. I don't know if it's as valuable as that John Deere hat, but this one is definitely cooler in my opinion. This is a vintage made in USA Flintstones hat. It's got the white up top, the gray bill, all embroidered Flintstones, Flintstones logo, and then the back has that Cartoon Network hit right there. Generally, Cartoon Network stuff is really really good I, I think it's like part of the 90s nostalgia a lot of people are getting into the cartoon network vintage t-shirts like dexter's laboratory and um power to power power puff powder puff girl power puff girls whatever whatever those shows where cartoon network is very nostalgic so a lot of people are looking for uh you know hats and shirts that have their favorite shows on there and of course the flintstones is one of the oldest shows on cartoon network i think maybe i'm just making stuff up you can also see the tag right there that it is vintage uh, 1995. Is that say made in USA? It does not say made in USA, but it is from 1995, so it's definitely vintage. A couple little string pulls, like, uh, can you see that right there? Little string pulls, we can get those off. Probably uh, maybe soak it in some OxyClean. It looks like to be a little bit of pen marking on the front, right down there, and maybe on Barney's arm. Uh, but pen, ink pen like that should come out pretty easily. I'm really excited about this hat. I, again, I don't really know anything about vintage clothing or vintage hats, but I talked to my friend Drew, Profit Monsters, uh, and we both think that this hat should be able to sell for about 40 to 50 bucks or so. Maybe I'm way off, but I, that's at least what I'm going to ask for it uh, off the bat. If you guys think I should ask more or you don't think it'll sell for that much, let me know in the comments down below. So I just came in my kitchen and got one of these Tide pens out of the drawer. I'm sure you guys know what tide pins are in the year 2021 but i used it on the hat a little bit and it actually got most of the stuff off all the pin at the bottom pretty much came off there's a little bit of blue left in barney's arm right there but for the most part this thing's looking pretty clean just for you know, not even washing it just using one of these tide pins so i told you guys about this system that i'm trying to implement into my life to keep me accountable keep me productive and make sure that all aspects of my life have the appropriate attention that they need and I'm not focusing too much on one category. So what we have here is a cookie sheet uh, and on the back of the cookie sheet is a piece of cardboard taped to it. I will have to come up with a better system eventually because my wife is not going to like me using the cookie sheet for this demonstration, but uh, temporarily this will do. Okay, here is what the chart looks like. You see we have health, business, family, and spiritual across the top. These are the four categories that I have chosen to break my life into and use on the chart. If you're not a spiritual person, you can leave that off or choose something else. If you're not into health and fitness, you can leave that off and just customize it. Make it however you feel it should be for your own personal life. This is just my personal chart. As you can see, we got some numbers down the side, one through 10. And basically the whole point of this chart is just to make sure that I'm not focusing so much in one spot, one category of my life that I'm letting the other categories suffer. So if I have spent the whole week listing stuff on eBay and making YouTube videos and I've made a ton of money in sales and AdSense, then my business might be up here. It might be a one. It might be maxed out. But that usually means that maybe my spiritual life is down here could use some work. Maybe I haven't been to the gym this week, so that <laughs> could really use some work. And maybe you know I need to focus on spending more time with my family as well, so we'll put that around a six or so. 
So every single day when I wake up, I wanna look at this chart and evaluate how I performed the day before in each of these categories. And whatever category is lacking, I know that that needs to be my priority for the next day. And that needs to stay my priority really until it starts to get up here and get everything kind of level. Um, for me personally, I usually focus way more on business than I do any other aspect. I'm just being honest with you guys. Um, I mean, I still make sure I spend time with Haley and Moe's and call my mom a couple, a couple times a week, but you can always spend more time with your family. You can always do better in that category. To be honest, you can always do better in all these categories, but uh, I think it's just about you making the personal decision about what you want to focus your time and efforts on. Uh, so I think this chart will help me. I used a cookie sheet specifically for these magnets. Uh, I had these, <laughs> these little geocaching magnets. Uh, so it's really cool that you can just, you know, adjust them however you feel that day. So if you work out, you know, for like for me, if I, if I work out today and tomorrow and the next day and I feel really good, I'm feeling pumped and I'm on a rest day, maybe I might can move my workout chart to a four or something. Maybe I'm feeling pretty good about that. And then maybe my spiritual life is, is down here a little bit. Then I got to, you know, do some more devotionals or whatever. You know, I'm not trying to preach to you guys, whatever, but whatever you need to work on, you work on it until it gets up to the chart. And then you work on the next lowest item until you move that up. And then you work on the next lowest item until you move that up. And usually in the process of doing this, probably the business is gonna fall and eventually you're gonna find this equilibrium well, where every aspect of your life is performing about the same, the same way. Again, I'm not trying to preach to you guys. I just like this chart. I think it's gonna help me a lot. Uh, I will probably have to get my own cookie sheet so we could use this one again to cook things with, but uh, I like it. And let me know if you guys like the chart. And uh, again, you could probably make something a little bit more fancier than this, than just this piece of cardboard with <laughs> Sharpie written on it. But this is essentially what I'm going to try to do day in and day out to, again, keep myself accountable, keep myself productive, and make sure I'm not neglecting one aspect of my life over another. Mose and I are going to go to Best Buy to pick up my toy slash tool for YouTube. Right, Mose? <laughs> you gotta be nice. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. He's, Hi, baby. He's friendly. Hi, baby. Uh, numbers eight five six three. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Y'all have a good one. <laughs> you too. Well, as you are, you are too friendly. Okay, can you get in the back? I got my toy slash tool for my YouTube channel. Make sure I'm focused here before I start yabbering on about this. I got the DJI Mavic Mini 2 drone. Now I have wanted a drone for my YouTube channel for a while now, but I've never been able to, um, you know, I don't really need it. I was like, is that an actual need for my business? But I recently worked out a sponsorship deal with a company and basically they bought the drone for me in, in exchange for some future sponsored videos. So didn't technically pay for this out of pocket, but I am technically very excited. The best thing about this drone is that it's small enough and lightweight enough that you do not have to register it with the FAA. You don't have to have a permit or a drone pilot license or anything like that. The bad thing is that with these smaller drones, it's not going to be like breathtaking, you know, camera quality. It's going to be about the same quality as a GoPro, which isn't bad, but you're not going to shoot, you know, cinematic movies or TV commercials with a drone like this. But for me and my YouTube channel, this is going to be perfect. All right, we've got a box of accessories. I wonder what those are. Looks like we've got the controller right here. And then, of course, we have the actual drone. Look how tiny, look how freaking tiny this thing is. There's a little camera in there. You can see it's it's very small, but again, it's about the same quality as you can expect from a GoPro. This is basically just a flying GoPro. So I've got a few minutes here. I've got to let the drone and the controller fully charge before I use it on the first flight. So I'm eating some lunch. I just want to give a quick shout out to Publix for making this buffalo chicken dip. This stuff is freaking delicious. Publix is not the sponsor of today's video. They didn't buy me the drone, but if you guys ever want to send me some free buffalo chicken dip, a little pretzel action, a little chip action. Mm. Okay, I did my test flight. I passed, I passed my pilot license or whatever on here, and I think I'm ready to take off. I don't have a ton of battery life, but we'll, we'll try it. There you go, you take a video. Fly it towards you guys. 
All right, I'm gonna go out in the middle of the yard. I'm gonna turn around facing me. Hey, there's me. Now let's go high. Let's go high, high, high. Actually, I think we can turn the camera down too. There's me. Hey. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come back. We're gonna come down and forward, all the way back to me. It's a pretty windy day too. And forward. That is pretty accurate. Easy, freaking, peasy. So first thoughts about this drone is that yes, it is stupid fun to use. I've flown drones in the past, but this is by far the most high quality drone I've ever flown. It's very receptive to like the, the controllers. You can control it really well. And the camera quality, I haven't looked at the actual files yet, but the camera quality on my cell phone screen looked to be maybe even better than a, a GoPro. The camera on it is actually a gimbal. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it, it, it makes for a very steady shot so you can like fly all over the place and the shot will be pretty steady. Um, so I'm going to continue to use this in the future. I don't know how much drone footage I'm going to be able to put on my reselling based YouTube channel, but nevertheless, this is a very, very fun toy and tool to add to my YouTube arsenal. So before I end today's video, I do want to revisit our little chart here, just as a reminder for you guys. I want to revisit everything that I've done just today and like evaluate myself based on what I've done today. So health, I did go for a pretty long walk today, not long, like two miles or so. So we're gonna put, we're gonna, let's put health around a four. Business, I'm also gonna bump up to a four because I've done a lot of YouTube stuff today. I've responded to comments and emails and filmed a whole video. I'll edit this video today as well, but I haven't done anything with eBay. I probably need to add another category up here instead of business, have one for YouTube and one for eBay because I'm constantly struggling with where to put my attention in those two categories. So we might change this chart in the future. Family, um, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave family around a five right now. I can always improve that, so we'll just leave that with a five. Spiritual, um, I, I, again, I don't want to get too much into this stuff. I don't want to ever be preachy, but I did like two or three devotionals this morning. I feel like I did pretty well with spiritual today, so I'm gonna bump spiritual up to a three. So as of right now, family is my lowest, so this is gonna be my priority going into the weekend. We're gonna, uh, you really focus on spending time with Haley and maybe call my mom and just make sure we bump up the, the performance in the family category to match that of the other categories. So I hope this kind of explains how this chart chart works. If you guys do implement a chart like this in your lives, let me know. Let me know what your categories are or, or how, how it's helping you, if it's helping you at all. I'm really curious if it's just some mumbo jumbo that I just came up with that only helps me or if it's something that can really help anybody that would implement it into their life. And with that being said, I am out of here. If you guys enjoyed today's video at all, take a couple seconds and hit the like button down below. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great weekend. You're the best. And I'll catch you on the next one.